Federal politicians are touring the country ahead of an expected election call. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is focusing on the Atlantic provinces this week. At the same time, he is appealing to the prime minister to hold off on sending voters to the polls. Singh wrote a letter to Justin Trudeau asking him to recall parliament instead. He says the NDP is ready to work with a liberal minority government on important issues. Singh says calling a snap election would put political interests ahead of the country. Jagmeet Singh is in Sackville, Nova Scotia. Thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. Singh. Uh, what response have you received from the Prime Minister to your letter? So far, no response. We've said really clearly there are a lot of things that we can do. If you really want, if the Prime Minister, if Justin Trudeau really wants to work on conversion therapy or on dealing with mandatory minimums or dealing with the opioid crisis, let's get back to Ottawa and pass legislation and get it done. My invitation has always been on the table. We've said this from the beginning of this pandemic, from the beginning of the minority government. If the Prime Minister, if Justin Trudeau wants to work on something that's going to help people, we are ready to pass that legislation. We've seen him work together with the Conservatives to vote against things like pharmacare, and we've been able to push him to do more for people. We are ready to work for Canadians. Now, the Liberals have accused the opposition of obstruction, which you have adamantly denied. But I'm curious, from your perspective, if Canada is at a point in this pandemic where big decisions have to be made going forward about how the COVID recovery, what it should look like, do you not think now is the time for you to make your case to Canadians to get behind your vision for how that should go? Well, that would be if I was only thinking about what's in my interest. I'm looking at what, what's in Canadians' interest, and for Canadians, they want to know that there's help coming right now. But there's but isn't but isn't your but don't don't you want to make the point to Canadians that your vision is in their interest? Is is that not the point you're trying to make that that you know to have an election? Well, instead of making that case, I'm going to fight for the things that people need right now. We know that people want access to the vaccine. We know we need to help more people. We know that small businesses are still struggling. We know that people are still unable to return to work. We know that a lot of sectors are still shut down. We know that there's a lot that needs to be done immediately. So let's continue to do that work. That's what I want us to do. We're still in the midst of this. There is still a serious pandemic and there's still a lot of worry out there. Let's continue to fight for the help that people need instead of spending time on an election, which will take us away from doing the work that Canadians need us to do right now. You've mentioned the pandemic and have repeatedly said public health concerns should be the top priority right now, not an election. Uh, but Canada's chief public health officer, Dr. Theresa Tam, has said publicly uh, that voting can be done safely despite concerns about a fourth wave. Do you accept her judgment? Absolutely. But I know that if you compare not having an election with having the election, it increases the risk. If we're crisscrossing the country, every province is going to an election. It's very different than uh, what we're currently up against, which is which is no national election. Uh, and so it would increase the risk. And I'm saying, why wouldn't we just focus on getting people the help they need? Justin Trudeau alleges that Parliament isn't working. Well, we're saying I'm ready to make things happen. If you want to pass legislation, let's pass it. Child care is important to me, important to all those advocates. Let's continue working to pass it in other provinces. There's so much that we can do right now to get people the help they need. Why wouldn't we continue to focus on people? And people might say, oh, governments always want power. Sure, they might always want power, but in a pandemic, wouldn't this be the moment where we think about what's in the best interest of the country, the best interest of Canadians, and put that first? That's what I've been asking for. You have very publicly been against the timing of an election, uh, saying now is not the time. You've asked the governor general, you've asked the prime minister. Uh, but one thing we've noticed here in the newsroom is that we just got an email from the NDP team saying that tomorrow uh, you'll be unveiling uh, your promises to Canadians. Are you unveiling your platform tomorrow? Is that what that is? Well, if Justin Trudeau decides to call an election, those are going to be our priorities in election. And if he heeds our call and the call of Canadians not to have an election, those will be the priorities that we'll continue to fight for in the next session. These are things that we want to focus on, things that we have been focused on, things like health care, making sure the ultra rich pay their fair share so we can invest in people, making sure we fight the climate crisis with good jobs, making sure we do what people need right now. OK, before uh, I know this is going to happen tomorrow, but tell us what is the top priority because the news release already came out right now we know it's coming tomorrow tell us what can canadians expect tomorrow as that top priority at the top of your commitment to canadians list top of the list is a question about how we pay for the pandemic and the recovery and the and the liberals are right now already doing one of the two options we've seen governments do in the past which is to cut help to people they're cutting help uh, in terms of climb back gis and they're climbing back and they're uh, they're directly reducing the support people get through crb we're saying it doesn't have to be austerity or putting taxes on workers. 
What we're saying is let's put the burden on the ultra wealthy. Millionaires and billionaires should be paying their fair share so we can invest in people. That's really the main question and that's gonna be our main push. Let's make the billionaires pay their fair share and invest in what people need. So what does that look like? What, what is the actual formula to make that happen? Number of things, uh, companies like Amazon make record profits in a pandemic but pay virtually no tax in Canada. We would stop that once and for all and do something like what France has done, tax the revenue of these large companies like Amazon that don't pay taxes here. We would close the loopholes that allow people to make wealth in Canada and hide those in offshore tax havens. We would shut those down and there's legal ways we can do that. And we would also put in place a wealth tax on those who are extremely wealthy, the super rich, and make sure they pay their fair share. Uh, I want to look ahead to uh, an issue that is going to be coming up on the campaign trail whenever that may happen. The Prime Minister has said he is looking at making vaccinations mandatory for federal workers. Should vaccines be mandatory for federal employees? I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that in general, Canadians want to see us do whatever we can to make sure everyone gets vaccinated. And I'm open to public health guidance around what the best way to achieve that is. Uh, we know that for frontline healthcare workers, that's something that makes a lot of sense. And I think that what Canadians want to see us do is put all of our efforts towards that vac vaccination process. That's something that we've got to put our emphasis towards. And right now, there's a lot of people that want to get vaccinated that are up against barriers. They may not have access to the internet. I've heard stories about people who couldn't book online, people that want to get to a vaccination center but can't make it there. We need to get those folks that are hard to vaccinate, not because they don't want to, but because of the barriers, get them uh, vaccinated and they want to. They just need uh, extra help. So I just want to be crystal clear 100% here. You think it's a good idea. You would be open to finding a way. Yes, you support uh, mandating vaccines for federal workplaces. I'm open to that absolutely, uh, unequivocally. And I also want to make sure it's also clear that to do that, the only way we can do that properly is to work with unions and work with the workers themselves. But it's something that I'm very open to. Yes. Uh, another issue that uh, everyone is talking about today is what is going on with China. Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau was vague when he was asked if there'll be any sort of diplomatic response to China in light of what's happened over the past few days to Michael Spavor and Robert Schellenberg. Do you think Canada should take new action against China? I think this is a heartbreaking scenario. I can only imagine the pain that Mr. Spavor's family is going through right now and Mr. Schellenberg's family is going through right now. This is really heartbreaking, it's very difficult. We need to make sure Canadians are returned home and we need to make sure we do everything we can to save the life of Mr. Schellenberg, who's up against a death penalty. And we need to use all tools possible at the diplomatic level, not unilaterally, but in a multilateral fashion to apply pressure on China to save Canadians' lives. Uh, what tools should Canada be using? Is there a tool that you think the government is not using that they should be using? What would you do here? Well, Ms. Simpson, you know I'm, I'm critical about the government when I, when I need to be. On this, I understand how complex and difficult it is. Uh, I just know that there are tools that we have in terms of working with allies to apply pressure. We should be open to those tools. And I encourage the Liberal government to continue to do everything we can to protect the lives of Canadians. We're running out of time here. There's one last thing that I do want to ask you about. At last check, the NDP has about 165 candidates nominated. Uh, are you going to be able to get a full slate of candidates ready to go if an election is called soon? Absolutely. Uh, I want to be clear. I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think that we should focus on helping people. But if an election is called, we will fight and be ready to fight an election. Mr. Singh, thank you very much for your time today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.